welcome back YouTube. I'm Ahmed again from In-Depth Tech Reviews. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you the top five apps you can get on any Android device right now. These apps are very useful, reliable, and they fill some of the gaps we have on our Android devices. So let's take a look at the top five apps you can get on your Android device. But before getting started, let's make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified every time I post a new video. So let's jump in. The first app I have here is called Access Dots. This application will let you know if any other app is trying to use your camera or microphone without you knowing. For example, when I open the camera app, you will see a green dot at the top left corner, which means the camera is now active. When I switch to video mode and start recording, you will see the dot is now in red, which means the microphone is currently in use. And by this, you will be able to tell when your camera or microphone have been used but what if this happened without your phone being in use or you want to know the name of the app that used your camera or microphone throughout the day? In this case, you go to the Access Dots app and then tap on the history icon at the bottom right corner. Now you will see the full list of apps that used your camera or microphone recently and you can also clear the list by tapping the trash icon right here to start a fresh new one. You can also change some settings by tapping the settings icon right here. It will give you the ability to change the color of your access dots, one for the camera, one for the mic. Tapping on the color will give you the color wheel, the RGB sliders, or you can simply put the hex code for the color you want. You can also choose the location of your access dots in one of the corners on, in your screen, top left, top right, bottom left, and so on. You also have a slider for the size of your access dot, but this one doesn't work in the free version. And finally, the download link for this app will be in the description below. So let's move on to the next one. The next app I have is called Count Things. This application will help you count anything you can think of using your phone camera, either by taking a new photo or use an existing one from your gallery. The first thing you need to do is to choose the correct template for the object you want to count. In this case, it's already set on coins. If you want to change that, you simply tap on a change counting template. You will first be presented with the ones you downloaded before. If you want to check the full list of templates, choose the last option. Just give it a few seconds to load and you will see a very long list of templates to choose from. It covers pretty much anything that comes to your mind. For example, it has here one for keyboards and remotes, one for uh, tubes, one for cigarettes, and so on and so forth. Once you are happy with the template, just tap on the get button. It will be downloaded and it will appear in the list of uh, templates you already have. I will set it now on coins. I will get a random number of coins to count using my camera. So here I have the coins. I'm going to tap on take new photo. Make sure everything is in the frame. I took my shot. Once you are happy with the shot, just tap on the tick icon. Then tap on count. As you see here, it says 27, which is 100% correct. It will also put a number on each and every coin to make you even more confident about the results. The download link for this app will be also in the description below. So let's move on to the next one. Next, Screen Master. This application has a lot of features related to screenshots and screen recording. The only one I'm interested in is called Web Capture. This feature will allow you to take extended screenshots for any web page you want. You can do it by either typing the URL in the app itself or load the web page in your favorite browser. Then share this web page with the Screen Master app. It will load it for you and then it will give you more than one option. The first thing you can do, you can set start and end points. For example, if you want to start from here, tap on start here and then scroll down to the spot you want, then tap on end here and capture. It will take a screenshot only for the section you selected or you can also tap on capture whole page. It will keep scrolling to capture the full page for you. So let's go for the start and end points. So now I'm going to tap on end here and capture. Give it a few seconds and the screenshot has been taken with all uh, with the starting and end points you set earlier. 
and it will be also saved automatically in a folder called Screen Master in your Photos app. And as expected, the link will be in the description below, so let's move on to the next one. Next, Super Display. This application will allow you to use your Android device as a secondary display for your Windows PC using a USB connection. This app will work with Windows 10. You can either choose to mirror your PC screen on your Android device or use it as an extended monitor. Either way, you will need to download the driver for your Windows PC by going to the Play Store, search for the app and look for the download link in the description. Once you tap on the download link, it will take you to the web page to download the Windows driver. Once you have it ready, plug your phone using the USB cable to your PC and it will appear as a secondary monitor. So you can choose either to mirror or use it as an extended monitor. I don't recommend this app to be used with phones because they have small displays. But if you have a tablet with a seven inch display or more, it will be very helpful. Also, this app will be using a USB cable, which means the connection will be very fast and reliable. So let me show you a quick demo here. Here's a quick demo for the Super Display app. Now I'm connecting my Android phone using USB cable, setting it as an extended monitor so I can drag and drop stuff to it without impacting my main display. For example, I have here Google Chrome playing a YouTube video that I'm gonna drag to my Android phone, as you see here. Now I can play this video in full screen, put it aside and enjoy doing my work on the main display. So I recommend using this feature with a, a tablet because the tablet has a lot bigger screen than a phone and that will give you better viewing experience. Also, you can take advantage of your tablet touch screen or phone touch screen. So I'm gonna use here my DIY stylus. So in this case, I can simply use my phone touch screen to do actions on my PC, which is really nice. So you can think of use cases here and pick the best one for you. But I think this app will be very helpful if I have a big screen tablet. And finally, the star of the show, the tap tap application. This app will utilize the double tap gesture on the back of your Android device to do certain actions. This app has been developed by someone from XDA developers. His nickname is Quinny899. To download the app, you will find the link in the description below. Click on it. It will take you to the thread of the app with the description, screenshots, and download links. The final version here is 0.4. Tap on it, download it, and install it, and you will see the app on your phone. So let's take a look at the features of the app. The app has a very clean interface and it's easy to use. The first thing you need to do is to activate the accessibility service by tapping the first menu item. It will take you straight away to the accessibility settings. Make sure that you have tap tap turned on, get back to your app, and you are good to go. The next menu item you have is called gesture. When you go inside, you will see device model and sensitivity. When you tap on device model, you will only see three different models, Pixel 3 XL, Pixel 4, and Pixel 4 XL. It doesn't mean that it will not work with all Android devices, but because this feature is ported from Android 11, which is currently available on Pixel devices, that's why we only see three models. Still, it's gonna work with any Android device. All you need to do is to try each model and see which one works with your phone the best. For example, if you are using Samsung phone, you can try the Pixel 3 XL model 4 and 4 XL and see which one works the best for you. Next one is sensitivity. When you tap on sensitivity, nothing happens because the feature is not yet available. However, it will be available soon in future versions. Next, you have something called actions and this is where you set the actions for your double tap gesture. As you see here, I have multiple actions. It doesn't mean that the double tap will do all of them at once, but it will only do the first one in the list. If the first one failed, then it will move to the second one. So for example, if I have here the flashlight set as the first one, double tapping will only activate the flashlight, but if this order failed, then it will go to take a screenshot and so on. You can reorganize your actions by using this handle and move the action to the top. So now I have my screenshot at the top. When I double tap, it will take a screenshot of the phone. You have a very long list of actions and you can add any of them by tapping on add action at the bottom. Here you will have different categories. You have launch, 
If you go to launch, you have the ability to launch app, launch a shortcut, like for example, um, uh, a specific directions. So if you go to directions, you're gonna choose the destination and double tapping the phone will automatically open Google Maps to this location. Or you can choose to launch your Google Assistant or launch your camera. You have other options under utilities like the flashlight only for now. Or you have other actions like for example taking screenshots, open notifications, quick settings, lock screen, wake device, uh, go home, go back, open recents and so on. You can also use it to activate split screen, launch reachability, play pause songs, previous track, next track, show volume panel, volume up, volume down, toggle mute. So you have a plenty of actions to choose from. It can also uh, uh, connect with your tasker event. So if you have a tasker event you want to activate, double tapping, choose your tasker event will do the work for you. To delete an, an action, simply tap on hold, move it to the bottom, it will be taken off. The next menu item you have here is called gates and here you can set some rules for the double tap gesture. For example, you can block it if the display is off or you can block it if the display is on. You can also block it briefly for half a second while connecting a USB device or connecting your charger. You can also block it while on a phone call it only works with voice calls for the time being, it doesn't work with VoIP calls like WhatsApp or Skype. There are also a couple of more options. You can block it while using the camera or while an app is showing. So it happens only when you are on the home screen and so on. The last menu item you have is called feedback and here you can set the vibrate and the wake device on and off, which means if you want to get feedback every time you double tap the back of your phone, it will vibrate and wake the screen of your phone. If you don't want this to happen, turn off the switches and that's pretty much it. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are the top five apps I have on my Android device. Please let me know in the comments if you have more useful apps that I can include in my future videos. I hope you like my video and if you do, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching.